We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Greetings. I assume everyone can uh, hear me uh, in the cloud and that the, that the room can hear me. I see a thumbs up. So I think we are good to go. Um, and uh, just a reminder to everyone uh, who is joining us virtually, please make sure you're muted so that uh, we don't get any funny sounds while we're trying to talk. Um, uh, welcome to all of you for this conversation uh, about the future of the internet. I'm Rebecca McKinnon. I'm Vice President for Global Advocacy at the Wikimedia Foundation, which uh, I think uh, most of you at the IGF are pretty well familiar with. Uh, we're the nonprofit organization that supports a global community of volunteers that run projects like Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that's now in over 300 languages that anybody can access and edit and whose content rules are set and enforced by a global community of volunteers. Uh, and I advocate for the interests of our global movement. And so therefore uh, it's very important that the future of the internet um, and, the, and the future of, of a globally interoperable internet be protected uh, and that our rights uh, be protected on it. And so I'm very honored to represent my community in this conversation um, with Tim Wu, um, who is currently special assistant to the president of the United States for technology and competition policy. Professor Wu is also an influential legal scholar who many of you may have read his, his work over the years and his ideas have shaped how a lot of people think about uh, internet policy and regulation in the US and, and, and elsewhere around the world. So we're going to be hearing from Professor Wu, who I'm in the habit of calling Tim most of the time, having known him for a number of years, um, about the White House's efforts to work with partners and allies to create an alliance for the future of the internet. Um, now, exactly what is that um, and what does it mean uh, is the question we're going to be talking with Professor Wu uh, at, at, about today. Democracies have been making commitments to internet freedom and human rights online in the past. And I think many in the civil society community certainly have been concerned that uh, governments have fallen short of their promises, um, to put it mildly. So the question that I'll start out by posing to um, Professor Wu, to Tim, is how does the Biden administration view the relationship between democracies and the internet? And how is this new alliance of countries that you're putting together um, aimed to work to meet its commitments? Thank you, Rebecca. And hi, everybody. It's good, good to see you. Um, as you can see, there's some people in the room, also uh, uh, people online. And um, yeah, no, it's a it's a pleasure. I'm 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 just glad we're able to uh, you know I, IGF is, is such a vital forum for 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 discussing and debate. And uh, the, the topic really today, I think the topic that is top of mind for the Biden administration is the uh, particular question of what uh, the duties and responsibilities should be of a state, nation states around the world with respect to the internet. It's not a new question, but I think it's one that has sort of uh, achieved a, a kind of a burning significance in our times. And I also think that it is a question where we believe we've been going in the wrong trajectory for some period. And we uh, think it's uh, very important to, to set things in, in a more positive uh, direction um, and uh, do so with some, um, uh, you know, not not gently, but uh, you know, do so with some with some um, with some strength. 
Um, let me uh, talk about, you know, a little bit about the framework and how we, we, we see this. Um, you know, part of this goes back to the original vision. Uh, I, I think that most of us, many of us shared uh, about the internet, the, uh, uh, what, you know, so the, 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 the vision of the 90s. Um, when the internet first um, became uh, popularized, first began to reach millions of people, and uh, where it first uh, was sensed that it might hold this immense promise for the advance of democracy, for the uh, well-being of humans, uh, you know, for the betterment of, of all. Um, the, many saw this design as essentially democratic in nature, an open network of networks, single interconnected communication system. Uh, I'll add also that from the beginning, it was understood uh, that the, the technical protocols were uh, governed and, and created by a multi-stakeholder approach that uh, was understood to be very resistant to government direction or control. Um, the the multi-stakeholder side of, of developing norms and uh, uh, developing standards and protocols has always been a big part of it, but seemed even from the very beginning, make everything very distinct. And so we had this extreme, um, you know, this, this, Attractive new vision, and I, you know, and, and I, as I said before, I think most of us uh, share the, this 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 uh, vision. Um, I, it kind of dovetailed, but I think with uh, uh, the broader uh, thinking of the '90s, uh, the kind of the dream of the '90s that um, the democracy was spreading more generally, that um, that um, many of the communist or authoritarian governments and in, in around the world. Uh, we're beginning to, be, to become democratic, hold their first elections. Um, and uh, in fact, Poland was one of the, the countries just in this uh, period that was emerging in the 90s. So uh, moving forward, I think uh, it's fair to say there's uh, 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 over the last two decades been a few bumps in the road. In fact, uh, more than a few. Uh, now, the trouble first began when some governments began erecting firewalls to block content and news reporting at their borders blocking freedom of expression, denying other human rights and fundamental freedoms. Uh, I'd say it was about 20 years ago that uh, places like Citizens Lab, which some of you may know, founded, uh, uh, run by Ronald uh, Dybert, and um, uh, also the Berkman Center, then uh, was directed by Jonathan Zetrain, uh, really began to track uh, the degree of, of blocking that was starting to happen. Uh, things went further. Some countries began to institute technical measures, such as internet shutdowns, to restrict uh, the ways that information could flow, contrary to international human rights commitments obligations. Uh, the fact is the trend has even gotten worse over the last five years in our view. Um, uh, for example, some countries have made active use of the internet as a tool for interfering with the elections of other countries. We've seen state-sponsored and condoned malicious cyber activity on the wise, criminal activity. And uh, finally, um, you know, social media platforms have proven to be potent vectors for the spread of misinformation, disinformation, which has uh, too often divided society uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, has been a potent sense, uh, a, a, a major problem for the uh, efforts to communicate accurate uh, public health information. And, uh, you know, overall, we've just uh, seen a, 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 a series of problems, both on the private and public side of the ledger. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the, the fact that privacy concerns uh, have grown, uh, as have competition concerns, as the once decentralized internet has become uh, one in which there's a much greater uh, concentration in, in major markets, and also where companies stockpile and sell data. So <laughs> I think uh, you'd have to admit, uh, even the most determined internet optimist, <laughs> Even the most determined internet optimist would have to admit that these are pretty serious challenges. Um, but uh, let me think what uh, we, the United States, believe we should do. Uh, we believe that uh, we should acknowledge and meet these challenges, uh, as opposed to pretending that all is well and pretend that that there's uh, uh, that, that nothing has happened to challenge the original vision of the internet. Uh, I we believe it is incumbent, uh, first and foremost, for the democracies of the world to respond even more forcefully and directly. We believe we need to revitalize and put forth a positive vision. We need to embrace and reaffirm a vision for the future of the internet that recommits governments now to defending human rights and fostering equitable uh, economic prosperity. Now, in other words, now is the time, the time to take a stand, to say what we believe in, 
and the time for governments to finally take full responsibility. We believe, along with our like-minded partners and allies, that digital technologies can reinforce democracy, respect for human rights. We believe the internet can continue to support an open economy for businesses small and continue to maintain connections among us and between our societies. We believe that the technology can support democratic deliberation. In fact, the point is we believe in the original vision. The dream of the 90s is alive in Washington, put it that way if you want, if somewhat battered and more realistic, but we nonetheless remain optimists. And so what we want to do and what we are working towards is really something of a new covenant. We are working towards building and assigning countries up for a new alliance for the future of the internet. What we believe is the democracies of the world should be recommitting themselves to defending an open, interoperable, secure, and reliable internet. We need to double down, the point is, to what, on what made the internet great in the first place, and at the same time, try and address and repair what isn't working. We can't be naive about the challenges we face. We cannot just assume that everything is gonna take care of itself. We are on the wrong trajectory. We need to do this to be more precise, to make it very clear what countries should and should not do when it comes to building and promoting our shared vision. And this cannot just be an American effort. It cannot just be an American project. It certainly cannot be the United States saying, hey, look, here's the answer, we've got it. This needs to be a broad effort that involves governments around the world and also needs to involve key stakeholders like yourselves, civil society and uh, other, other groups. Um, now, I hasten to add that, you know, it's not as if we invented the idea of internet freedom yesterday. We need to build as much as we can on pre-existing efforts, whether it's multi-stakeholder fora, like here at the IGF, uh, whether it's a Freedom Online Coalition, whether it's other multi-stakeholder groups, other governmental bodies, OECD, G7, to name just a few. Um, it should build on the work of, of some of the people who've been active in this, in this area for so many years. Um, obviously, uh, uh, some of the internet founders and web founders like Vince Cerf and Tim, Tim Berners-Lee's work, even later, uh, earlier work at JCR Licklater, um, and not to mention uh, more, more recent figures, Marguerite Schachte, Carl Bildt, Mitch Baker, uh, Rebecca, our moderator, the list goes on and on. I'm sorry, I can't mention uh, everyone, but there is a huge number of people who have been active in this space, and we are trying to build and harness their efforts. They have seen this coming. Uh, we are really, you know, as the cliche goes, standing on their shoulders and trying to commit both the, the resources of the United States, but also of, of our allies and like-minded countries uh, to, to, this, uh, to this project. And our goal is to commit to and arrive at principles that inform what states and also other relevant authorities should and shot, should not do when building and promoting a positive vision for the future of the internet. Now, let me be clear about one thing. This effort is not trying to seek to create new norms in any sort of broader sense. This effort is to answer the narrow yet key questions of what constitutes responsible state behavior in this area, how states can defend uh, the global internet and the principles it stands for. So here's some of the obvious uh, principles that uh, are in a working list. These are more of the do's. Uh, the do nots are coming next. So states should do, should respect human rights online, just as they do offline, respect in the human declaration of human rights. Countries should be promoting affordable, inclusive, reliable access to the internet, and uh, basically supporting efforts to close digital divides around the world. We should all be strengthening our work to combat abuse online, including gender-based violence. And we should be reaffirming our conditions to actions to, sorry, we should reaffirm our commitment to actions taken by governments and digital platforms to reduce illegal and harmful content online, consistent with human rights law, while also consistent with freedom of expression and, and encouraging a diversity of opinion without fear of censorship. On the other hand, and uh, I said those were the do's, here are what at least some of the do nots, thou shall nots need to be. Countries should not be blocking, shutting down, or degrading access to lawful content services or applications on the internet, consistent with principles of net neutrality and applicable law, including international human rights law. Countries should not be misusing or abusing the internet or algorithmic tools or techniques for surveillance and oppression, including developing social scorecards, other mechanisms of social control, 
pre-crime detention or arrest. No country should be using the internet to undermine electoral infrastructure, the elections or political processes of other country. And finally, governments cannot unilaterally govern the internet's global infrastructure. So countries should avoid undermining the multi-stakeholder system of internet governance. And they should be supporting consensus-based decision-making for technical policy that involves all stakeholders. Now, these are just the basics of, of um, shalls and shall nots, do's and, and don'ts. I'm sure others that have other lists, I think part of the you know, goal, so maybe a part of a conversation is, is to understand uh, what, what uh, should be here. And I, I just wanna close, um, and thank you for uh, your patience with these remarks, but I wanna close by linking what we're doing here to, to a growing movement, both in tech and beyond and in civil society to reimagine what the internet and the web can be. Uh, you know, I, I, I note a few Mozilla's reimagining open statement. Um, back in uh, 2016, a lot of the ground was set by the Global Commission on Internet Governance, which Carl Bildt held in. Uh, you know, organizations like the Center for Humane Technology run by Tristan Harris. Uh, all of these are efforts, and there are many more, um, that are trying to reimagine what the internet should be for this coming decade. And, and we want the nation states of the world to do their part. We think the democratic governments need to take action to ensure that the internet is what it needs to be. The tide is high, the time is now. And I, I wanna encourage private sector, governments, international organizations, technical community, academia, civil society to work in partnership together for the better future, which I believe we think is attainable. Um, and I, I accept that was a long answer, but I am looking forward to our discussion. And uh, thanks to everybody. Thank you. So um, we've got about half an hour. Um, we've got a lot of people uh, with tremendous experience and knowledge, uh, both in the room and, and online. So just, just so people know what my plan is, um, there are three different ways people can ask questions. One is by raising hands uh, virtually in Zoom. The other is um, by typing in questions in the chat. Um, and I understand there are some people physically in the room who may not be online on Zoom in the chat. So uh, I, I think if you, if you wave your hand uh, you know, very noticeably, I may be able to see that, or perhaps somebody in the room might serve as a representative to, to call my attention to the fact that there's there's somebody with a raised hand in the room. And I believe- it, Rebecca, I'm here, I'm right here. So I'll, I'll make sure you get lovely. to see hands. Thank you very much. I mean, I really appreciate that. So so it's kind of three different ways and I'm gonna try and strive for a mix. Um, and uh, we'll use moderators prerogative to ask follow-ups here and there or, or, or to, to press for clarification. So we've, the first hand that has been up for some time is from uh, Yik Chan Chin. So um, uh, please ask your question, uh, unmute yourself, ask your question. Hi, yeah, I'm Yik Chen and Professor Wu, it's nice to meet you. And uh, actually, I, sorry, because it's late. So I didn't turn on my reading. Because <laughs> uh, just to let you uh, have some background, my background, academic background, because uh, I studied human rights law in, in University of Nottingham in UK, and uh, especially the human rights law. And, uh, and now I work in Beijing Normal University. So my question is, uh, actually there's a very intensive debate in here in China, you know, about uh, the intention of this kind of the future internet project. Uh, whether, because you use the term about democracy or democratic country, so, the, so there's a, I think you probably notice as well, you know, whether you, uh, the, the intention of this kind of the fame is to target um, particular countries such as Russia and China. So this is the first question. Um, and the second question actually is from, this is a, actually I ask for my colleague, you know, uh, on behalf of them. Second question is my personal question, actually it's about uh, international human rights law. Because uh, we know that uh, uh, in terms of international human rights law, uh, there's a, a ICCPR and also the cultural, economical, social rights. And uh, China didn't set up to ratify the ICCPR, but the American didn't ratify the, the second one, the economic, social, and the uh, cultural rights. So, so when, you, when we talk about the human rights, do we talk about uh, which one? 
because the uh, two countries, you know, and uh, that's only the European and, and the EU who ratified both. So are we following the EU approach or are we following the American approach or the Chinese approach? So that's my sec uh, 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 second question. And actually, when, when I look at your previous publication and, uh, and that's a first generation, second generation, and third generation of the global governance of the internet, you know, and you are the first generation scholar who argue about the sovereignty, the, the national sovereignty in the cyberspace, and then you are the third circuit generation also argue about the minimum sovereignty, you know, collaborative sovereignty in the cyberspace. But uh, so, but it seems that you, now your position is shifting. So where, where is the place of the sovereignty now in the cyberspace? Thank you. That's all my Thank questions. You. Thank you. That's that's quite a lot of questions. We could have a whole conference just on those three questions. But uh, um, Tim, please, uh, uh, Professor Wu, please take a th th Thanks a lot for the, those questions. And uh, um, uh, at Beijing Normal University, uh, I, I've, uh, I've been there, and uh, I, I look back finally in the year in the the, the time I spent in Beijing. Um, I uh, used to live near the the West Lake. And Rebecca, our moderator, also spent years in Beijing, so very, uh, very uh, congenial uh, place to all of us. So, yeah, I, I want to make uh, clear from the beginning: this is there's no intent uh, in the alliance to to uh, uh, target uh, China or or any other country. I think any country who uh, abides by the principle uh, that the uh, maybe I, I have said this too quickly, but the um, the uh, the alliance is about uh, democracy and rule of nation, the rule of law nations. And our uh, current position is that, that uh, you know, if any country that uh, uh, that subscribes to the basic principles, uh, which we think are are, are pretty fundamental principles, um, is welcome to join. So there's no, um, you know, sort of idea that um, you know, one, uh, certain forms of government uh, are are excluded. Um, so I, I'll just put that out there first. Uh, the second, uh, if I could, if I could interrupt, I'm sorry. I'm going to be a slightly aggressive moderator, just in the interest of of of, of the conversation here. Um, uh, the the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, of course, is connected very much to the right to participate in political processes and and democracy. So, so am, am I correct in understanding? That uh, um, if if a country is is not subscribing to the 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 kind of core fundamental civil civil and political uh, rights related to the rights of individuals to participate in democratic processes that that might not be consistent with membership in your alliance. My question too. Uh, Rebecca, I didn't know you were. Uh, I, I didn't realize you're a human rights lawyer. Um, well, I spent a lot of time on human rights uh, matters. Yeah, no, I, I'm just, uh, I, no, I appreciate it. I think the, um, so the the current, um, you know, I, I basically, I think we need to, to the right now, the, um, as I said, you know, as we're envisioning things and I, and I, uh, I take this as an opportunity. I think we need to think about when we say human rights principles, human rights law, what we mean, whether it's universal declaration, ICCPR or other, or you know, uh, other we haven't quite, I, I would say, in, in this process, uh, gotten into this, and I and I appreciate this opportunity to take back and think about you know when we're saying uh, human rights norms, whether uh, we are precisely meaning ICPR, the Universal Declaration, whether uh, the uh, you know uh, what exactly we have in mind. So I'll just take that as an opportunity and to to wind our way through those questions. Um, I, I think you also asked about uh, my. I would do want to get some through more more of these questions, but you know I think my own um, <laughs> scholarship uh, right I'm I'm uh, you know I, I'm right now um, uh, speaking on behalf of the of the U.S. government, so I'm not to, whether you know my own scholarship is a topic that I will return to when I return to to uh, to academia. Um, I see we have a lot of questions, and I want to make sure we uh, we reach some more. Absolutely. Uh, so Wolfgang has had his hand up for nearly as long. Um, so, so we will go to Wolfgang Kleinwater for uh, next and, and please identify yourself. Uh, yeah, thank you, Rebecca. My name is Wolfgang Kleinwächter. I'm a professor emeritus from the University of Aarhus. Uh, Tim, uh, first of all, I, I share uh, the, the aspirations and the intentions. So, and uh, we have 25 years of 
uh, John Peter Barlow's uh, Declaration of Cyber Independence and a lot of the founding ideas have forgotten. However, you know, what we have seen in the last years is really a proliferation of similar initiatives. I myself was involved in the Net Mundial initiative. So I was the special ambassador for this initiative where we had similar aims, you know. Uh, I would not say this collapsed, but you know, we have seen now a number of these initiatives. The web we won from Tim Berners-Lee, you mentioned, we have the Paris call, we have not only the Global Commission from Carl Bildt, we had also the Global Commission on Stability in Cyberspace, we have the Freedom Online Coalition, so there's a huge uh, a BK of different initiatives. And you know what I uh, uh, wanted to ask you, do you see the risk that this will be to a splintering of uh, all these platforms and this will weaken you know, the uh, democratic forces because you, know, you have only limited resources. So that means, uh, uh, and, and, and what would be the, uh, the, the concrete activities? And the second question is the Executive General of the United Nations has proposed now the drafting of a global digital compact, which is for the 193 member states of the UN, plus all other stakeholders. I think it's an interesting move from the United Nations to invite uh, non-state actors, you know, to uh, participate in drafting of such a global digital compact. So how this alliance would relate to the process which will start soon to draft this global digital compact. Thank you, back to you. That's a good question and I, and I appreciate it. And, um, you know, it, it is uh, a concern of ours, I think that there are, uh, you know, that's something we've wanted to be compatible and, 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 and build on. Um, I, I will say that uh, I think what distinguishes uh, what we're this current effort uh, is a few things. Uh, first, at least the stands, we're not trying to create a new institution uh, with the Secretariat. Um, we are trying to uh, bake down and uh, have states commit uh, in, 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 in harder terms they have before to what they should and should not do. It's, it's very centered on the question of, of nation state uh, behavior. And I think it's going to be relatively, uh, you know, you heard some of what I said, it's going to be relatively short as these things go and basic and ideally clear. Um, it's gonna be binding. Uh, uh, it's not gonna, uh, it's, the plan is not to be a treaty, uh, but we do expect countries to commit themselves to this. Uh, you know, I think it's a lot different than some of the efforts to um, sort of uh, develop, inter uh, you know, sort of more general um, uh, norms uh, or efforts by like the G7, which are limited to much smaller group of countries. Uh, it is planned to be, um, uh, uh, you know the, the countries that, that can and sign up with this um, will be uh, the ones that, that do it. Um, the other uh, question, and I think this is or the other part that is uh, is is worth, uh, and I also think it'll be quick. Um, I, I want to suggest that we uh, are planning to have uh, we are optimistic, uh, attempting to um, uh, launch uh, in the early year. Um, and then uh, with sort of an initial draft uh, vision statement and then knock uh, this thing out uh, over the next several months. So I think the, the timeline process is on a completely different uh, uh, kind of timeline than some of the other processes. Uh, in terms of, you know, there's no, the, the, uh, uh, the functioning, I think, uh, as it's currently envisioned, uh, will um, also be, uh, you know, whether you're, uh, the Maybe, maybe I should just leave it, leave it there because I don't want to go uh, over my skis. But I think those are some important differences and what uh, and what what's going on. You know, there there is a serious question uh, you raised too, and I want to uh, discuss them. Um, one is, uh, you know, is there a chance that this will? Um, there's just too many efforts. People can't keep track of it. It gets too confusing. Um, you know, I, I think that is a real a real a, a, a real, uh, a real da a, a danger. But I think that we have uh, sort of the concentrated attention of this administration and the concentrated attention of, of many of our allies that want to do something and want to act quickly. So I think we need to seize that moment. And, you know, these are serious uh, problems. We, we think the, you know, we, we basically think it's too important to not act now. I, I think that this part comes part with a, you know, a new administration uh, wanting to, uh, you know, uh, turn around the trajectory here. 
And um, I, I accept that it will come for some costs and, you know, we're, we're trying as much as we can to incorporate what everything is, but we do feel a certain urgency here and that's why we're acting. Um, Great. Thank you. So um, Andrew Bennett has had his hand up for a very long time. So I'm going to go to him next. Um, then there's sort of a set of questions in the chat that relate to compliance. Um, so I'm going to ask a kind of pose a, a blended question um, that 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 uh, draws from um, several comments and questions in the, in the chat and uh, then uh, in line after that is Milton Mueller. Uh, I don't see any hands in the room. So that's that's our, our batting order uh, for the moment. Uh, Andrew Bennett, please identify yourself. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, I'm Andrew Bennett from the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change, uh, based in the UK, but a global organisation. Um, it's been really positive to hear many of Professor Wu's comments, and I really agree that there's a role for both um, states in this place, but also kind of the real advocacy around democratic and liberal values. I wanted to ask um, for countries that are at a sort of tipping point in their internet model, which particularly maybe many emerging economies, how can these new coalitions that we're describing be based around um, you know, economic and security interests, not just values? You know, where are the sort of carrots as well as the sticks um, so that um, you know, we can really build sustainable coalitions for the long term? One example might be um, you know, security of semiconductor supply chains, offering that to free up um, other sort of uh, constraints that states might have given the other partners that they're currently working with. Um, I'll pause there. I think that's a great uh, question, and I, you know, we are, as I said, very early stages, and uh, that is, I think, for us, a, a key question that we are asking. I mean, one of the things we want to do, um, you know, we we believe the values here are very important. We believe the economics are also important, um, and I, I I think that we want, you know, to, um, you know, some some uh, co countries who might be on the edge might be saying, well, you know, why don't I just, uh, you know, shut down uh, the internet around elections or, you know, uh, spy on these journalists and arrest them. Um, you know, uh, the countries on the edge, I think we want to vehemently discourage that and suggest that, uh, you know, you're going to get yourself into the status of being, um, you, you know, you're going to, you're going to cross a line. And I think that's part of the point of having very clear principles and lines here. Then, And I'm not saying, you know, human rights norms, obviously, and, and law already exist. We're not rewriting them. But we want to state, with respect to the internet, you know, if this is what it means to cross a line if you're if you're a state. But, you know, that's a bit of a stick. What's the, what's the carrot? Um, I, I think that's something we need to, to work. I mean, the, the, there is basically the, the promise of interconnection, the promises uh, of, of, of help. I think that also, um, you know, the United States uh, needs to think and other uh, wealthy countries need to think about how they how they help countries uh, that, that do want to stay on, on what we consider a better path forward for their internet. But I, I'll just say that it is, and I, frankly, I welcome your ideas. The point about semiconductor supply chains is a good one. I, I welcome uh, ideas for how, how we make this uh, work how this uh, is an enticing thing to want to be in, given the temptations that may be out there um, to, uh, to, to go with a different kind of internet approach. Um, so yeah. so uh, unless you were going to make another separate point, maybe I'll, I'll go to some of the questions in the chat. Does that work? Make sure we get to, to Milton. He's always there. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get to Milton. Don't worry. I, I, yeah. I won't. Uh... Um, but but there are some questions in the in the chat um, that that came before he he, posed, yeah. he he put his hand up, um, and and several of them relate to the same thing, which is about compliance, uh, which which is about actually how are you how are you going to get countries to to uh, actually follow the principles and and not violate them, and and that might relate to all agencies of the US government, uh, as, along with um, uh, other governments, um, which sort of leads to the question of, uh, uh, you know, rela a related question of, is there going to be a, a, a complaints mechanism that you say members of this community can file a complaint against uh, through to your alliance about a member government that has clearly violated the princi principles? Uh, do we want to sort of be benchmarking um, governments uh, against the principles. What's what's our mechanism for for this uh, really kind of 
uh, not just having carrots, but having a bit of a stick? Great, great question. Um, you know, let me deal first with that question of benchmarking complaint process or something. I think that's an, an area in active consideration and um, is really worth thinking about. Obviously, there's private groups who, um, I can think of Freedom House as an example, or um, a Citizens Lab or uh, the Berkman Center at various points who, who um, you know, have spent a lot of time trying to, to give, deliver a picture uh, of, of what, uh, how nation states are, are behaving. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, they have their own internal benchmarks. I think part of our goal is to set out these principles to, to, to make them um, clear that they, were, they are agreed on as between countries. As for the consequences, there's, um, you know, as we envision it now, it's not uh, as, as if the Alliance has um, its own uh, enforcement mechanisms, but I, I would you know, I put it this way without getting uh, too far ahead that I feel that countries, if, the, if this effort is successful, countries should be nervous to be breaking these rules. Um, they should feel a sense that could come with a consequence. Um, and, uh, and I think part of that comes, uh, and maybe I'll just leave it, leave it right there. So uh, since uh, all the questions have been answered um, by, I mean, been posed uh, so far by men, um, I'm, I'm going to use uh, moderator's prerogative um, uh, in keeping with the, the forum's uh, values to, to uh, uh, point to a, a question that, that is posed by a, a woman in the chat, Rasha Abdullah, um, and uh, who's, who kind of asking for a bit more specificity. And I know part of the problem here is that the Alliance hasn't been announced. The principles have not been announced. They're still being negotiated, I, I guess, and, and, and figured out. So this is a bit of a preview. So, so kind of acknowledging that, um, you know, that there, how, how do we get this specific enough? Um, uh, what exactly is the action plan is, as Russia is, is asking? What, what is the something that, that people are going to do? Um, and how do you make sure other countries follow this plan and not, not abuse their, their power? Um, I, I guess I'd, um, you know, I, I guess I'd, I'd point to the similar answer. I, you know, as, as we said, this is uh, in process, but this is a group of countries who's agreeing, you know, with, e with each other. Um, you know, that uh, th these are the principles we believe in. And I think, I, I mean, I guess you have two questions. So what about countries that don't join at all? You know, what, what happens to them? And there's another question, what do you have? What about a country that joins but then doesn't uh, live up to these sort of uh, expectations? And uh, I'll say this much because I don't want to, you know, this is an ongoing thing and we're putting it together. But it is the view uh, of, our, of our government, it's our view that we uh, intend this to have some uh, teeth. We intend it to be more than sort of a declaration of principles that countries feel free to, to sign up for and deviate from uh, willy-nilly. So I, I just want to make that, that clear that that is the intent. Um, you know, I think we will uh, have a sense of the mechanisms as things go, go forward. I don't, as I've said before, don't believe it will be the mechanisms will be in any the alliance itself, but will uh, be located elsewhere. And I hope that helps. Okay, so we've got two more, and we're we're nearing time. So we've got two more hands from the room, as as Henriette has helpfully uh, described. We've got uh, Milton and Henriette, who's going to get the the last question and word, I I suspect, given the time. So Milton, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Tim, uh, thank you very much for trying uh, to rekindle the vision of, of internet freedom and the kind of growth and, and excitement and positive social benefits that came out of it in the early days. Uh, I think when we started that process, um, the US helped to create institutions. Uh, it didn't just articulate principles, it did create institutions that implemented that. Things like uh, ICANN, which sort of de-sovereignized the global governance of the domain name system, 
uh, Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act and the global e-commerce principles of, of the Bill Clinton administration. And that really helped to make the vision of internet freedom a reality. So in many ways, I sense that your initiative is kind of undercut, undermined from within by a withdrawal from the vision within the US itself. Um, you know, Section 230 is under attack in the US. Uh, President Biden has said bad things about it. Um, both Democrats and Republicans are now against free trade uh, in information services. Um, and the backlash, you mentioned Tristan Harris, for example, uh, the backlash against big tech means that state regulation of platforms is on the agenda everywhere. And of course, this acts to justify various kinds of restrictions and uh, uh, impediments to a, a globally open internet, particularly this idea of digital sovereignty. And so I guess my question is, are you willing to really challenge that trend and say, maybe we have gone too far in that direction uh, and particularly the notion of digital sovereignty, are you willing to come out against that and explain why it's not a good thing? That's a great question. Are we overcorrecting and trying to address problems? Yeah, so we don't run out of time. Can we, uh, why don't we collect uh, two or two or- Sure, so uh, Henriette, um, can, we, can we get your question as well, please? And, and maybe uh, Milton's, I'm a little There's one more question in the room, Rebecca. Is there mm -hmm. time for it? Um, I, I don't know to what extent the organizers are going to be strict about our, our ending time. We, we're using less time than we were originally allocated. So I think if everyone's okay, okay with that, we can take a few more minutes. So I'll do mine okay later. And so let me give it to the other person and then I'll okay. do mine. Very good. Okay, so my question was, you know, Tim, um, well, I, I echo the fact that, I, firstly, I think this is a good thing. We need to talk about these things. But it is complex because there are so many other initiatives. And I think there's the carrot, as you said, there are the sticks, but there's also walking the talk. And I think that, that the challenge, and I think Milton just articulated it now, um, for states to, to fulfill their duties um, in terms of compliance of human rights, they also need to hold business accountable, particularly business that operates within their national jurisdiction. And when you're dealing with companies that are global and have a global footprint, that becomes very complex. But I think for the US, if it's going to show any leadership in this area, it's going to come up constantly against people saying, what are you doing about your companies? That, that has to be because there's a kind of at the business model level, a violation of rights that's kind of hardwired into how that operates. So challenging that or changing that, I think is going to be quite complex, but has to happen if, if showing leadership in taking this forward globally is going to, to work. Uh, you know, I, just, I, just sorry, and then the final thing, in terms of human rights, there's actually a really sophisticated network of institutions and also principles and decisions. So I think the internet has actually done quite well and um, through Freedom Online Coalition, through the special rapporteurs, David Kay, um, and you know, in, in terms of human rights mechanisms, there's actually fairly good, good practices and norms and monitoring, but it's that overlap with market regulation that I think really needs more attention. Okay, that's it. Sorry, back to you, Tim. Uh, no, I, I appreciate it. I think these two questions together are, are um are helpful because they actually point in exactly opposite directions uh, to, to be uh, uh, to be honest because uh, you know one one view of it would say well you need to go back to um, basically um, uh, keeping governments uh, distant and that's the point of, of restoring a freedom uh, you know on the internet and your your point is um, you know a lot of the world's populations when they think about uh, you know what's wrong with the, uh, you know what the challenge is. They, they see it as the concentration of private power, and um, and I, I I think that um, while I our view um, is that while we we see that the original vision uh, of the internet uh, was powerful and it brought a lot to a lot of people, and um, uh, that it had a certain uh, assumptions that, that didn't turn out to be exactly correct. 
Um, one was a, sort of assumption, I don't know if it was ever explicit, that, um, you know, the sort of nation, there was, I don't know if everyone said this, obviously, but, you know, there was kind of assumption that nation states, uh, countries would, some believe they would be unable to, to regulate the internet, that it wasn't everybody, but some people said, you know, they're sort of irrelevant. And another was, well, anyways, it, it's not really clear if they're, they're part of the story here. And I think that is something that's changed. I mean, you, you, given the, the level of, of blocking, uh, fragmentation, um, all the things we, we discussed, um, that they, they have uh, played a role, so there's a very negative role. Uh, the other thing that, that happened, I think there was sort of an assumption that the economy, um, which was first non-commercial, obviously, until some point, but then um, uh, became a commercial, would be uh, in sort of inherently competitive and uh, someone uh, very easy to get small businesses would flourish as well as large, uh, you know, would be a great place for everyone. And I think the concern, and this is a concern that the Biden administration certainly shares, is that uh, too, many of the pro too much of the proceeds have gone to too few companies. Uh, that um, there has been a, a loss of competition and um, uh, on the internet and a sense of a loss of opportunity uh, to, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, start a small business or an entrepreneur, uh, even, even whether or not it's a tech business or just a regular, you want to sell something that, um, you know, that there's been, uh, it's been harder and harder um, to make a decent amount of money. And this dovetails with larger concerns about inequality, which we have had uh, that we also share. So I think in some ways what, uh, what we're pushing towards is a, uh, you know, and it's a, it's, a, it's a, it is a fine line, but a corrective, uh, a vision that is both reaffirming uh, the past and the values and the promise, but uh, first correcting for the fact that, um, you know, in fact, nation states not only are not irrelevant, they can be very dangerous, to uh, some of the freedoms that we expected to come with the internet. And second, um, a sense that, uh, that private companies um, and uh, particularly uh, a concentrated uh, market power um, can also pose a threat or uh, endanger the vision that people, that people believed in in the first place. And, you know, and that can also involve uh, a role for states, whether it's antitrust enforcement or whether it's privacy protection in protecting citizens. And so, you know, to answer the last question, what, you know, what about the United States and Biden administration? You know, we are, um, and I know you're going to say, well, let's see it, but we are uh, committed to tech accountability. We've supported a vigorous antitrust program. We are in litigation with some of the major platforms. Um, and we have, uh, you know, uh, we have, we, we, I think, are in a diff de decidedly different position than uh, the United States was 10 years ago with respect to private power. And, you know, that's in some ways only natural. Um, 20 years ago, uh, the internet economy was still very small, even 10 years ago, very different. But we've seen a growth of, of, uh, of concentration that has changed our, our domestic policies. And so in some ways, we're aiming here as a reflection of, of what we think domestically. But it's not all just about us. I, uh, I want to uh, reiterate that, um, you know, the internal deliberations of the United States are part of this, uh, but certainly not, not all of it. And I, I think that's, uh, that's about it. And um, I, I appreciate, uh, Rebecca, I want to say thanks again for your, for your, for your moderation. Yeah. And this time. It's a good a very good conversation, you know, worthy of, um, uh, I, I just want to say that the, the, forum, the IGF is certainly playing its role. And we've got a lot here to, to figure out, um, but I, I expect you will start, you will see things happening. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Well, thank you. And, th and thanks uh, to the IGF organizers for allowing us to go a few minutes over. And, and thank you for Tim, Professor Wu for sticking with us um, a, a few minutes um, later. Um, I mean, what, what it really sounds to me like you're saying is that this alliance, once, once we learn the specifics, which are still being worked out because it's taken a little longer than originally intended to, to, to sort out the specifics and consult with necessary stakeholders, that this is going to be about the, what is and is not the appropriate use of state power in, in relation to the internet and, and, and private actors. If, if, if I understand it correctly. And, and certainly this community 
uh, and many others have have a lot to input into that. And so it's uh, great that uh, that you're consulting with this community and and others as as you work to um, uh, refine what the alliance is going to be committing to and how. Um, and I'm sure that many people here are, are eager to continue the dialogue in, in various ways. And so thanks to everyone here for, for your um, excellent participation and, and challenging questions. I commend Tim for, for coming and uh, exposing himself to, to challenging poking and prodding um, uh, as, as, as we help you improve this idea because uh, too much is at stake. And uh, I, I think we would all like to see uh, power being wielded responsibly and being held accountable. So thank you very much. Great, thanks again. Bye everybody. Take care everyone. Good evening.